Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a derecho with hurricane force wind gusts, very large hail, and tornadoes. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is an afternoon special update on uh, July the 28th. I wanted to fine tune the severe weather threat that's gonna be happening later on today into tomorrow. But taking a look at the latest uh, satellite picture, we've got the developing system up here in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. That's gonna be our setup for later on this evening. We've got winds coming in, racing off off to the west. We got this jet stream buckling down to the to the south, right along that boundary where this ridge of high pressure is dominant. The winds are going to be able to split, and we should have supercell thunderstorms starting to fire on the north side. And this will traverse south as we go through late later this afternoon into the evening, and then a possible derecho forming with some very damaging winds, straight line winds as this will shift further into the south and this is a nighttime threat guys that's why this is very severe because this is an overnight threat of very severe weather and intense weather at, at that so let's take a look at the latest uh, storm prediction center and they just even upgraded it from this morning they've expanded the uh, moderate risk area to include pretty much the entire state of wisconsin and they actually included parts of uh, Michigan now so that they based on the latest uh, high resolution guidance they're increasing confidence now of a widespread severe wind gust threat has increased and we could look be looking at significant damage especially like tree leg damage so these areas uh, in and around the Milwaukee area is now included uh, Grand Rapids the Green Bay uh, pretty, like I said pretty much the entire state of, of Wisconsin is going to be under the gun uh, later this evening and now it even includes Chicago's with that enhanced risk uh, it expands anywhere from Grand Forks to all the way to Fort Wayne so this is a huge area uh, that could be impacted from very damaging straight line hurricane force winds uh, some very large hail and a tornado is not out of the question as this will uh, continue to fire up later on this evening so let's Let's kind of zoom in to each threat. Here is your tornado threat. So at the beginning stages, you're gonna be susceptible for that very large hail and tornado. So even this, this is a pretty big risk zone in yellow here into Duluth, into Minneapolis, into La Crosse area. Those areas have a 10% hatched risk, meaning you have that probability within a 25 mile radius of an EF2, EF2 a tornado to be in and around your area that's that's like a hundred mile per hour winds plus so i mean these damaging with these straight line winds could act like an ef0 ef1 tornado and then you're talking the potential an ef2 tornado on top of that that's a damage that's a dangerous combination that could be impacting uh these areas uh later on this evening into the overnight hours so but as this, uh, this, like I mentioned, this will be a, a very large hail threat as well because they have a huge risk of a hatched risk, meaning that two inch uh, diameter or hail or possible. Uh, the latest guidance has hail potential up to baseball size hail. Uh, that's basically two two point seven five. So that could be doing some damage to not only your cars, but also your roofs. So it could be a, a very a damaging night ahead for a, a large chunk of the state of Wisconsin. So that is that is definitely a huge concern. But as uh, as these become less discreet and as they kind of form a bow echo with like these bow segments, that's when I think the, the, uh, the straight line winds are really going to be starting to set up as the air will be rushing out ahead of it. And this is a significant threat. I mean, I've never seen a, a like a... Uh, you know a 45 percent zone pretty much you know cover the entire state before and including across the great lakes and then traversing into the other side into uh to michigan as well so i mean these areas it's a, it's just a huge concern and that's why a duration is possible of a straight line wind threat of happening for several hundred miles uh that's for, so you're talking possibly extensive damage for a good chunk uh, of that area so 
But on the flip side, we also have a, a spot in North Carolina that we have to be concerned about. They all, already issued a severe uh, thunderstorm watch in that area. So places like into Fayetteville, into Sanford, to Raleigh, to, to Rocky Mount, uh, into uh, Greenville, uh, Jacksonville, New Bern, into Elizabeth City, and De uh, Kill Devils Hill. All those areas in yellow between now and 9 o'clock are going to be... Uh, susceptible to seeing some of that ping pong size hail and some uh, damaging wind gusts of up to 70 miles an hour and a lot of lightning with it too. So for the next uh, five, five, six hours now, you're going to be under the gun for that severe threat uh, in, in the, into uh, North Carolina. But this, this is the new latest uh, high resolution guidance as far as the maximum wind gust potential this morning, it, it had a probability of going up potentially 76 miles an hour. Now, guys, look at this, 117. I don't want to see if it, if it gets this intense, but that's the possibility that could be on the table. I'm thinking upwards to 90 miles an hour, but if, it, you know, if this thing gets some legs behind it and has it bowing out like that in the, mid, in the middle of the night, this is an overnight threat. We'll discuss the timing so yeah, it's definitely very concerning that uh, the, the, just the latest update of the latest short range models, it updates every single hour, having a, a max potential of 117 miles an hour at peak. That is definitely concerning. So that, that is, that is, that's the risk that could be on the table uh, later on tonight. So let's take a look at the guidance and some of the timing. So like I mentioned, this is gonna be right around sunset or just after sunset. But this is the latest uh, HRRR model around nine o'clock this evening on a Wednesday. We could be seeing supercell thunderstorms, these little discrete white supercells. That's the, that's the separation. That's the indication of some very large hail. Atmosphere is gonna be rotating at that point. So we could start to see some tornadoes start to spin up in this atmosphere as this will dive down to the Southeast in the, in the overnight hours. As we move through time, uh, in the beginning, we're going to have a tornado threat and a very large hail threat, and then I'll eventually tra uh, 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 tr transfer to a, a bowline segment of a possible duration with str very straight line winds, hurricane force winds. The more this is able to bow out out ahead of it, the more the higher the winds will be as this will shift, keep diving down to the southeast. Notice it's one o'clock in the morning. This is literally in the middle of the night, guys. This is a very damaging threat so definitely have your weather radios handy uh for this possibly significant event that's just on the table as we continue to move through time this is 3 a.m so now we're talking in and around the chicago area about three o'clock in the morning and because of this comes off the great lakes you can actually see these little whited dots as well it keeps the intensity alive and that's for the reason why the storm prediction center has included parts of uh west Michigan here and the moderate risk for that heavy uh, heavy wind threat as these still look to come off the shore very damaging winds this will continue in that bow segment this is like three o'clock in the morning and this will continue moving uh, further off into the southeast and that's about 7 a.m so it could be in around central uh, indiana central uh, uh, getting in the northwestern parts of ohio and then in and around the uh, cleveland area it's still impacting parts of michigan but uh, wisconsin should be in the clear by then but it's going to be a rough night ahead and when you wake up tomorrow morning I expect probably a lot of tree damage uh, to be in and around this area. So take any precautions as possible that you can uh, to lessen the impact from this uh, particular event. But as this continues moving across, uh, even tomorrow, I mean, they've even expanded this risk as well. So this still looks to be pretty intense, not, not nearly as intense as what they've been dealing with, going to be dealing with today. But still, these storms could be packing a punch as this is going to be more of a daytime threat instead of a nighttime threat. So now they have areas in and around Indian, uh, Indiana. Pretty much the entire state of Ohio is going to be impacted from this. Pennsylvania, along the coast here into uh, New York and Jersey, into D.C. could be uh, seeing some of those uh, stronger, uh, severe th th thunderstorms. And but, but also we have that tornado threat too. I mean, these areas don't really see tornadoes all that often. So it's kind of somewhat rare in a, in a way to see even a 5% chance for a good chunk of Columbus to Pittsburgh, 
even parts of dc is uh could get on could, could be susceptible to seeing some of those uh, uh t tornadoes uh tomorrow and in, even into philly so this is a pretty good swath from uh, louisville all the way up the coastline that uh, the i-95 corridor could be under the gun just seeing some of those uh tornadoes even into even in the day on tomorrow so let's take a look at the high resolution guidance as we transfer in tomorrow. You can definitely see it's definitely not as compact. These are more isolated. Still the severe threat, but not nearly as intense of what you're going to be seeing up here. But this is what it would look like right around that, you know, uh, 10, 11 o'clock time frame tomorrow morning, still impacting pretty much a good chunk of Ohio. That'll transfer in and around the Pittsburgh area, getting into western uh, Pennsylvania that'll start impacting uh, New York and then this will start impacting right along the coast as this will continue uh, moving east and as we get into the afternoon hours there's that uh, three or four three to four o'clock time frame on a th Thursday afternoon it should be in and around the I-95 quarter really packing a punch and that's right at uh, pretty much prime time getting to be prime time four o'clock, you know, uh, kind of rush hour traffic's trying to start. So, yeah, some of these storms could be really strong by then with a lot of people starting to be on the road. So that is a dangerous setup as well as these will be packing a punch as these will continue uh, moving across as we continue moving it through about seven o'clock. I do feel like a lot of these a lot of these storms are going to be moving off the coast by then. So this is more or less a daytime event. But this is a this is a pretty significant threat. It's just now trying to get going right now in uh, northern parts of uh, Minnesota. And this will really get its act together and fishtail around this boundary here and eventually be off the coast here by the time seven o'clock time frame rolls around uh, tomorrow night into uh, Thursday evening. So, hey, I just want to give you a quick update on this developing system. Uh, definitely stay weather rail tonight. Have your weather radios handy. Uh, take all the precautions necessary to keep you safe as possible. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.